the channel. This is Rough Rider Chronicles, episode two, man. Like I said, I'm a big, big fan of the Rough Rider. So seeing this and seeing it, what X did to come up, <clears throat> it's, it's very good, but man. I'm not gonna hold you up, man. I'm Mo, if you're new to the channel, man. Hit the subscribe button, turn on your notifications so you get something every time I drop. Let's jump right into it. This is episode two, Rough Rider Chronicles. At this point, they're looking for DMX, a record label, and they just shopping around, but at the same time, DMX, he's in and out of jail, a couple of months here, a couple of months there, just little bitty things, because if rapping ain't working, Rob and Cho will be working, but one day, X is in jail, and he ends up spitting on the guard, which gets him put into solitary confinement, but for X growing up, no one really, like, loved him, so he was always by himself in his room anyway, so for him, this is normal. They even said, though, while X is locked up, the only good thing that can come out of it is he's going to give us a whole bunch of material because he's about to be writing everything he's seen, everything he's going through. So X took time, took uh, took advantage of the time he had while he's in solitary confinement, came up with some rhymes. And that's all X used to do is just write, 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 write. At this time, Rough Riders, they're looking to expand past just having DMX. They're trying to actually have a label and get it going. So DMX actually knew the locks, but they were going by Warlocks at this time. So they were a smaller group. Now, the only downside about this is Rough Riders, they wanted to sign them. They heard them. Styles P, Jada Kiss, Sheik Luke's, they all had the unique style, and their group was good. They wanted to sign them, but they had a, a little deal, production deal, with a new an, another little company. But pretty much they had to go handle that. Just like any other situation, it was a strong, <laughs> a strong arm takeover, pretty much. He went over there. We want to sign the locks. You wasting any time. You ain't putting nothing out. Let me get them. So they end up signing them over. It comes to a little agreement. Now the locks is rough riders. The locks, they started taking off. People were hearing about them. They were hearing about them. And they knew Mary J. Blige. Mary J. Blige actually took the locks to Bad Boy. Diddy heard them. Said, you know what? I want to sign y'all. He signs them. They changed from more locks to the locks. Now they're with Bad Boy. But how this works for Rough Riders is they have a management deal with them. So DMX and Rough Riders, they're technically over. The Rough Riders are managing Jada Kiss, Styles, Sheik Luke's, and Locks while they're up under Bad Boy. So they're getting the profit off of that also. So the Locks are still Rough Riders, but they're under Bad Boy. DMX had been sold for a while after he had got released, but during this time, his grandmother ended up getting sick from cancer and ended up passing away. And at this point, DMX, he, he was hurt because that was the only love he received from when he was younger. It was just the connection he had with his grandma because his dad wasn't around. His mother ended up giving him up, but his grandma always was there for him. So for him, he just he went on a binge, was doing drugs, drinking. He was gone. They, um... They brought his, at the time, wife, and they actually found him at a little trap spot, just in there, drugged out, but he was in there writing, though, so this is where all the pain started coming from once his grandmother passed. So DMX, he's he's from the battleground background, so he was always battling and stuff, and everyone around the city always knew him. It was like, oh, you want to battle X? Okay, we'll set it up, we'll come, we'll come challenge you or whatever. One time, he ended up challenging Jay-Z. They ended up getting into it, where they had to actually a rap it out so they had a local pool hall and whoever raps they get on top of the table so jay-z's up there rapping they said he's killing it now x comes in and it's his turn to rap but why now d they like nah y'all can't record any of our raps because we haven't you know what I'm saying basically copyrights we don't want y'all to take any of our stuff and then use it later so dang dash is like all right but he said when dmx got up there ooh, hey they were going at it but they said it was close. They didn't get to record DMX his, his side, but they said it was super close. Even X was like, man, that hey, it was super close. So he didn't say he won, but he showed him say he lost either. At this point, DMX is looking around like, what's going on here? I brought the locks. They're signed the bad boy. You know, uh, I talked to Diddy and he said he couldn't market me. So I'm out here. Let's give me a deal. Let's work on me an album. You know, I'm the, the big artist on here. I'm out here battling everybody. Let's, let's make it happen. So since he isn't bubbling like everybody thought he would be, he's still out in the streets robbing people. And one night he said he ended up getting into it with some people. They ended up jumping him because they thought he robbed them. But actually, he robbed the person that robbed them. So after he got jumped, he went to the hospital. 
his whole jaw was wired shut, just like Kanye. But at the same time, they knew Irv Gotti, and Irv Gotti became an A&R at Def Jam. So he pretty much introduced Lior Kong to um, DMX and the Rough Riders. Like, hey man, I got an artist, I want you to come listen to him. Lior goes over there, DMX doesn't show up till like three in the morning, so Lior's there for four hours just listening to people. X comes in, they put in his tape, and he starts rapping it, but he's rapping it with his jaw shut. So once he gets done, Lior's like, open your mouth. He sees his mouth and he's like, X is delivering this much energy, even with his jaw. Oh yeah, we signing you today. And Irv Gotti is like, man, I've been telling y'all, let me be in the NR and let me sign. Cause this guy X, I've been telling y'all for a while, he's the next up. Irv Gotti gets X over to Def Jam and it's time to work, 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 work. So, they just going in, going in. So the whole thing about the Rough Riders is they wanted to be different from all the shiny stuff like Puff. Everybody was stunting and shining, but they wanted to stay street. So Irv Gotti actually, he had a vision and he remembered old songs that DMX had that didn't jump off of it. So what he did was he took a beat, he came up with a hook for it and then just took three random verses from X's old songs and put them together and came up with Get At Me Dog. Now once Get At Me Dog came out, X was like, man, I don't really like it because he, he's street. And this was kind of like, he had the little thing. So it was catchy. And Irv Gotti knew, hey, if I can get Funk Master Flex to play this, everybody's gonna catch on. And what did he do? Everybody caught on. So for X, it's like, okay, cool. Well, we gonna shoot this video. Let's get Hype Williams. Herb Gotti's like, let's set it up, let's get some bikes, let's get some dogs. Let's just keep it straight street, you know, separate us from all that bad boy stuff. Keep it, keep it hood. And hey, X is born. <laughs> now this is the X we all know. Now X is on fire, so they're finishing up this first album. And it turns out Swiss Beats, this is when he comes along. So he's the nephew of Wine D. So he comes back up here because he's been making music, but he doesn't have any equipment. He doesn't know anything. So they put him with PK and Grease, you know, the people that already been making the music for Rough Riders. And he's just pretty much learned it. So he doesn't have a sound at this point. But this is where things start getting a little, you know what I'm saying? Producers, they like, man, Swiss is getting an unfair treatment because his uncles run the company. But they were like, Swiss put in that work. So Swiss put in the work. He's going to get on there. If, if the song is good, then we're going to use it. It turned out Swiss came up with the Rough Riders anthem. He came up with it. DMX said he went in there 15 minutes, super easy. But when they played it, oh man, it took off. And then this is where they they took off, like just how they took the streets for the first video. This video, they like, man, let's just bring in all kinds of bikes, all kinds of dogs, everybody in the hood, bandanas. And this song just took off. Like the Rough Riders anthem is, uh, Man, that's one of them songs that they play that, you, you gotta get ready for it. Along with that, like I said, the producers, they started clashing since PK felt like I taught Swiss everything he knows and now he's just taking off and he's getting more songs and everything than me, but he doesn't even have a sound. I taught him everything he knows for y'all to be like, hey man, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna fall back on y'all a little bit. So. He just felt like it was a young dude that came up under him back door and they trying to eliminate him, but it wasn't really like that. Swish was putting it work and we all know Swish's work is almost untouchable. So it was like, man, Swish is just ahead of everybody. Hey, there we go. That's episode two of the Rough Rider Chronicles. Hey, before we go, which song was better for you? Rough Riders Anthem or Get At Me Dog? I know I'm a Rough Riders Anthem, but let me know down below. Hey, thanks for watching, man. We're going to be here for episode three. So we got three episodes left, three, four, and five. We're going to be here for all of them. We finish up next week. So hey, if you like my content, hey, thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel, like, comment, share. Hey, let's get it. We're going to be here for episode three. Hey, thanks for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on the beat, boy. Thank you.